I'm here at Stockholm Arlanda Airport and I have a few minutes before my next flight so let's just quickly review number five Old Testament faith in the series on the gospel in Galatians and this particular study is a very interesting one because what Paul is doing is he's referring back to the Old Testament he's not saying that everything there was wrong he's simply saying you really want to go back to a methodology that has been proved does not actually work the way you've understood it. He says there in Galatians 3, 3, you began by God's spirit. Do you now want to finish by your own power? Thinking that by keeping the law, they then can save themselves. As he says later on in Romans, the law is good, but it can't save you. By the works of the law, no one is justified, set right. It, that's not the way it works. The law is good, certainly. Paul is not saying that it is not. He's simply saying that's not a mechanism that can save you. He just points out where you are. So as we look at Galatians chapter 3 in particular, and also Romans 1 and Romans 4, I we'll need to bring those in as well. What Paul is really doing is saying, okay, that was then, this is now, the way that we tried to do it before, remember he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, it didn't work. And he refers back to Abraham, of course, the archetypal father of the nation, the one to whom the promise was, was made. And that this is really the person you would really look to. And then he says, of course, it wasn't because of Abraham's law keeping that he was saved. He was saved. He was credited with righteousness, counted as righteous, if you want to say it that way. He was seen as righteous in fulfillment because he trusted God. That was the key, his faith. He trusted God and that was counted as righteousness because if you trust God then you're going to be willing to change and respond and God can work with you if you don't trust God none of those things can work you see and then Paul goes on to these two curses the first is depending on the law to save you that's in verse 10 and the second is that Christ became a curse for us and then of course the question then becomes did God curse Christ and certainly not but he became a curse he took upon himself the consequences of sin he cannot take sin upon himself directly and exactly because you can't transfer sin around that's very obvious what you've done is what you've done you can't move it from yourself to someone else but the consequences were demonstrated in the death of Christ and then he says in Galatians 3:14 Christ did this in order that the blessing which God promised to Abraham might be given to the Gentiles by means of Christ Jesus, so that through faith, trusting God, we might receive the Spirit promised by God. Do you see how that's a very different understanding of the meaning even of the whole Old Testament and how he leads it on? In the account that we're given there in Genesis 12 of Abraham, the original plan was he was to be the father of the nations, many nations, and through the one nation of Israel, Abraham's primary line, that's how the world was to be blessed. Because eventually through that line would come Christ Jesus. Didn't work out the way that God would have wanted it. The people weren't responsive. They didn't react in the way that they should have done, let's put it that way. And yet that Old Testament faith, trusting in God as Abraham did, is still the same model. And Paul is saying, but you don't understand. You don't go back to the mechanistic way of law keeping. It's the trusting in God. And Abraham had that before even there was the law laid out. It's that covenant relationship. So a wonderful way of looking back and understanding what the Old Testament faith was really all about and what it was really meant to be. May God bless you as you look again at just that.